Hey everybody, thank you guys for tuning in to check out the updated D&T uh, PvE Dungeon and Fractal Thief Guide. Um, so the January 2015 balance patch had a pretty substantial nerf to might, reducing it from 35 power per stack to 30. The end result is that organized groups will be losing about 120 power per player, which amounts to about a 3-5% to overall DPS reduction. More so than making kill times longer, this change completely alters the optimal balance of power to precision for most builds and changes the perfect gear for the min-max crowd. Luckily though, the thief doesn't have to worry about all these issues as, as the optimal thief build will result in a 102% critical chance, meaning that you don't need to get any extra precision from gear or food. Thief and PvE didn't gain much from this patch aside from changes that were almost entirely PvP centric. As a result, much of the information in this guide will be redundant to veteran players, but hopefully this will be a big help to newer players looking to explore the Thief profession. So, uh, based on all of this, uh, we view that there are currently four viable Thief builds depending on the encounter you find yourself in. The main build we'll be talking about is the DPS build focused on providing maximal personal DPS while also contributing decent amount to vulnerability stacks, providing blinds, and also projectile defenses for your team. This is a versatile build that operates well in organized groups and pugs, and it is the highest single target DPS build in the game, and is purpose built for that task. The second build is a variant of the main DPS build, but designed for longer fights or players newer to the Thief class. In short bursty fights, it will produce a bit less DPS than the main Thief build, but will actually surpass the main build in fights that extend for a long duration, such as you might encounter in Fractals. This build also has a simpler DPS rotation, and that makes it an excellent build for newer players uh, looking to pick up the class and run with it right out of the gate. The third build we're going to talk about is based around the trait Feline Grace. This is a trait which essentially doubles the amount of dodges a thief has, which is extremely powerful. Generally speaking for newer players, however, the issue is rarely that you run out of dodges, it's that you just dodge the wrong things or fail to dodge the right things. So this trait, granting you extra dodges, won't help you see telegraphs or avoid uh, or avoid the, the attacks any better. So it isn't of tremendous use to a very inexperienced player, as some might argue. Instead, this build shines when doing difficult boss and dungeon solos and you find yourself in situations where the boss attacks are frequent enough to exhaust your normal dodges and you don't want to use an energy schedule. In short, it helps you best when you know what to dodge, but just don't have enough endurance to do it. Uh, the last build we will discuss uh, briefly will be for times where you simply aren't able to flank a boss or when you need extreme survivability. In these cases, a sword pistol build utilizing pistol whip for offense and defense will be extremely effective. So next up, we're going to talk about gear, which thankfully is the same for all the different builds uh, today that we're going to talk about. And we'll get to the gear in just one second. All right, guys, so the gear for the Thief that I recommend you run is full Berserker with Scholar Runes. Um, thief has it rather, rather easy in that regard, as there's not too much thought that needs to go into a Thief's gear. Uh, full Berserker, Scholar Runes. You don't need any extra precision from Assassin's pieces, and you don't need Ranger Runes or anything like that. Just Berserker, Scholar, super easy. As far as fine infusions go, if you go that route, Mighty Infusions, again, are the only choice. Again, there's no trade-offs to consider when min-maxing a Thief for PvE in terms of precision versus power. He just go full on power. Um, so at minimum, you'll need the following gear for a Thief for dungeons. You're going to want two daggers, uh, one with Sigil of the Night and one with Sigil of Force. You're going to want a sword with Sigil of Force. And you're going to want a pistol uh, with Sigil of the Night. Uh, and then you're going to want a short bow with knight and bloodlust. Since your short bow never comes off your bar, off of your weapon swaps, it's okay to actually use a stacking sigil on it. Uh, and so thief is one of the few classes that will actually be able to take advantage of a stacking sigil, which makes their DPS even higher uh, than other classes, relatively speaking. If you're a true mid maxer, you may want the following gear as well: um, a backup dagger and sword with either Sigil of Frailty or Sigil of Air for daytime dungeons where the Night Sigil does not function. Um, and you may want a backup Sword and Dagger with Undead Slaying for a Raw to replace uh, the Sigil of Night um, when you're doing a Raw. 
or uh, for any any dungeon where you want to bring uh, Slayer Sigils. So that's it for the gear for a thief. It's rather straightforward. And so next up, we'll talk about the traits for the different thief builds. All right, guys. So we have the main thief build here. Uh, it's a 66002 layout. The goal of this build is to maximize per personal DPS by utilizing the proper cloak and dagger backstab into Heartseeker rotations. Additionally, through the proper swapping around of utility skills, the build is able to provide very valuable team utility with blind, stealth, and projectile defense. So the traits we're going to take in Deadly Arts will be Sundering Strikes, Dagger Training, and Revealed Training. In Critical Strikes, we're going to take Side Strike, Signet Use, and Executioner. And in Trickery, we're going to take Flanking Strikes. Um, you should note that if you're in a pug or a particular party composition that doesn't have very high fury uptime, feel free to change Flanking Strikes out for Thrill of the Crime to give your team additional fury uptime. So that's it for the main DPS uh, build trait layouts. Next, I'm going to discuss uh, some of the others. Okay, so this is the Infusion of Shadow Thief. It is a 66200 trait layout. Um, this trait selection produces slightly less personal DPS than the main variant in short fights, but in long encounters, the extra frequency of backstabs will eventually lead to superior DPS compared to the main build. Additionally, this rotation is much easier to manage and is easily recommendable to new players uh, to the Thief class. Um, in Deadly Arts and Critical Strikes, the trait selection remains the same. However, instead of taking Trickery, we put two into Shadow Arts for Infusion of Shadow, which gives you initiative when you stealth, meaning you'll get two initiative back every time you Cloak and Dagger, which will allow you to Cloak and Dagger more often, which means backstabbing more often. Uh, you do lose the 5% damage from Flanking Strikes, but in longer fights, you'll make up for it by getting to Cloak and Dagger and backstab much more often. Uh, so that is basically the big difference between these two builds. Uh, I personally recommend this build for fractals. And uh, also, it's pretty good when pugging, simply because your pug might not have as good a DPS as an organized group, and the fights could end up going pretty long. So uh, those are the two main thief builds. The next two are kind of niche builds, and I will discuss those uh, as well. Okay, so next up we have the Feline Thief. Uh, this trait selection produces noticeably less DPS personally than either of the first two builds, but it trades that DPS in for double the amount of dodges. In difficult boss solos, or in extremely poor pugs, this build shines by making a skilled thief effectively immortal. The difference between the main build is we get rid of one in Deadly Arts and lose revealed training, and we pick up three in Acrobatics, which will unlock for us Feline Grace. Uh, feline Grace will return uh, half of a dodge every time you dodge. So essentially, you get an extra dot, you get two extra dodges on your bar. It's very powerful, and like I said, you're going to be doing a lot less DPS because you're missing out on the points of trickery or shadow arts uh, and revealed training. But it, if you're a good thief and you know what you're supposed to dodge, this will make you effectively immortal even without the use of an energy sigil. Um, so that's this build, and then there'll be one more build to talk about. All right, guys, so the final build is the Pistol Whip Thief, which is a 56003 build. Um, this tra trait selection produces much less DPS than any of the dagger-based builds, but po possesses a few strengths of its own. First, it has significant evasion ability, thanks to Pistol Whip, uh, which is an evasion, as well as the ability to keep mob trash mobs perma-blind with black powder. So the survivability is very high, uh, and that's what you're trading away your dagger DPS for. Um, combining Signet of Malice with Pistol Whip is a very strong heal, um, and when used with uh, effective use of dodging, what you'll be able to do is maintain basically uh, perfect health uh, constantly. Uh, especially when you can cleave multiple mobs with Pistol Whip, it's essentially a full heal every time you cast it. Um, this build is ideal for fighting trash mobs or any fight where obtaining flanking strikes is impossible uh, and the main benefit of dagger, which is a backstab, is nullified. This also excels against any boss with a long windup and one hit kill mechanics where pistol whip can be used reactively uh, as an evasion skill. For extremely challenging fights, you can use this trade out loadout but remove executioner for invigorating precision which will return a significant amount 
of health back in combination with Signet of Malice. Uh, basically, every pistol whip, even if you're fighting a single target, will amount to a full heal. Uh, it's extremely powerful uh, in fights of that nature. Um, so this uh, build, as I said, you basically want to use it when fighting di very difficult trash mobs or fighting bosses where you're not going to be able to get backstabs off or bosses that are just extremely challenging. Um, this is a very forgiving build, and I would recommend it for a player uh, who's just at absolutely struggling to survive even with Feline Grace. This build is even more defensive uh, than the Feline Grace build. But I think you'll find uh, that it has very interesting trade-offs and can actually benefit your team pretty well. Um, so that's it for builds. Uh, I will move on and discuss uh, consumables next. So I want to briefly discuss consumables uh, that I recommend people bring with them for dungeon runs. If you want a full guide to consumables, check out Brazil's channel, which has a what to bring in speedruns video that goes into much greater details. Um, so the viable food for all builds, uh, the most optimal food for all builds, is sweet and spicy butternut squash soup or seaweed salad. Uh, these two foods are a significant DPS boost, especially seaweed salad if you can meet the always moving requirements. Luckily, a thief uh, using anything other than the pistol whip build, a dagger thief will always be able to move while hitting, so you'll always get that 10% boost and it is a very significant and noticeable DPS boost. Um, additionally, I always recommend using the appropriate Slayer potions for whatever dungeon you're running in. Um, in the cases of instances where you can't use a Slayer potion, I recommend uh, either Sharpening Stones or Scale Venom. Um, lastly, I normally recommend players to bring Harpy Feathers with them. However, we're talking about a thief here, and thieves don't need Harpy Feathers. Uh, if you need Harpy Feathers and you're a Thief player, I'm just going to cry for you a little bit on the inside. Um, so that's basically it. If you're looking for value food, um, my recommendation would be Dragon Breath Buns. I know that the uh, Sweet and Spicy Butternut Squash Soup is about a gold each, and Seaweed Salad is not very cheap either. Um, so your budget food is either going to be Steak and Asparagus, which kind of stinks because you don't need the precision, um, or more ideally... Dragon's Breath Buns, uh, which will give you power, big bonus power after you kill a mob, and some uh, bonus crit damage. Uh, those are pretty decent budget foods uh, for the thief. So, uh, going on next, I will discuss uh, DPS rotations a little bit. Alright guys, so DPS rotations. Um, I have a video on my channel for Thief describing basic but optimal DPS rotations and uh, for the 66002 build. Um, however, I will do another example after this section so you guys can see it again in case you don't want to watch that video. Um, and then I will also include the optimal DPS rotation for the infusion of Shadow Thief as it is slightly different than the main DPS rotation. In both cases, it is important to know that the, threat, the optimal threshold to begin using Heartseeker is 25%. In the past, many guides on the internet declared that someone should begin using Heartseeker rotations at 50%. However, those guides did not take into account the fact that the PvE version of Cloak and Dagger has a higher damage coefficient than the PvP version, and most people tested their damage coefficients on the test dummy in the mists. However, in PvE, this does do higher damage than it does in Pv PvP, and therefore the optimal place to start using Heartseeker is at 25%. So in PvE, you want to continue to use Cloak and Dagger backstab until the, mo the boss hits 25% and then begin the Heartseeker. Um, so, coming up next, I will show you both of those rotations, starting with the 66002, and then we'll follow it up with the Infusion of Shadows.
All right, so that's it, guys. I hope you enjoyed my updated Thief build guide. And if you have any questions, please feel free to ask in the comments, and I'll do my best to answer them. If you have any tips to share uh, for new and interested Thief players out there, and you're a pro Thief, be sure to chime in. And I will see you guys next time. Thank you so much for uh, checking out the video. Have a great day, guys. All right, so that's it, guys. I hope you enjoyed my updated Thief build guide. And if you have any questions, please feel free to ask in the comments, and I'll do my best to answer them. If you have any tips to share uh, for new and interested Thief players out there, and you're a pro Thief, be sure to chime in. And I will see you guys next time. Thank you so much for uh, checking out the video. Have a great day, guys.